What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason and Joe here, Gene Clark Week. Cram's got the week off, just the two of us. Um, and today we are going to talk about cult artists or artists with cult followings. Kind of interesting trying to come up with uh, some of these, kind of seeing some lists online of artists and, and like different people seem to have different definitions of what it really even means to be a cult artist. I don't know. For me, I think it would be like not very popular, not very famous, but your fans are kind of rabid, just very intense fan base, even though it's not really, you know, that large of a fan base. That, that's kind of where my list is coming from. Uh, I don't know if you approached it differently. Pretty much the same. It's tough to like parse out any cult artists that aren't from the 60s and 70s. So I feel like once you hit the 80s, like people were so much more well known and you had all these smaller genres that kind of flourished in their own scenes. So most of the artists I was looking at are like older 70s, 60s, like kind of back when music was a little easier to slip through the cracks. Because now, I mean, you have artists in the 80s and stuff, um, you know, someone like Joy Division even, there's not that many, you know, rabid joy division well no, there's a lot of rabid joy division fans but they've all gained together they all know who they are uh and you don't like lose those classic albums like you would in the 70s so i just think like everything is going to be from the 60s and 70s at least on my list but i don't know if you found any 80s 90s artists that could possibly fit into the uh, discussion i don't know We'll see. All right, I'll, I'll go first, I guess. My first one is uh, my boy Todd. I uh, don't know if anyone's not you know, familiar with the channel. Todd Rundgren is who I'm talking about. He's an interesting case because he was mainstream, hugely popular, something anything was a massive record. Um, and then he kind of imposed cult status on himself where he, you know, he had income from producing for other artists. So he had the ability ability to say that, like, I'm just going to make the records I want to make. And if you're with me, you're with me, just like who's coming along. And he did a lot of really interesting, different kind of stuff, dabbled in Prague, made pop records, put together a pop band, uh, did more experimental stuff. Lately, he's been like doing house music. So you never know what Todd's going to do. And he's got a core fan base that will follow him and do and, and listen to whatever he puts out. Um, yeah, a little bit like this. Yeah, yeah. Wherever you are, I was pointing to Jason because he's one of them. Yeah, so so I think uh, he's an interesting case because, you know, he can also like kind of switch back and forth into the mainstream like at will almost because, you know, now that he's, you know, older, the people that remember something, anything, he can do kind of like a greatest hit show and and draw bigger crowds, but he can also do clubs and do whatever the hell he wants. Um, then I'm going to go with another band that I'm a pretty big fan of. I've got They Might Be Giants, the, the Johns, uh, kind of quirky, weird pop sensibilities. I've always just done really interesting stuff, I think. And they're a band very much so that I think it, they're kind of a case of either you get them or you don't. And if you don't get them, you won't like any of their music. And if you do get them, you will probably be very into them. Kind of like an ideal uh, recipe for cult status. Um, then I'm going to go with one that is a more recent. And I think the cult status may come more from just a single record than anything else. Uh, but I've got Neutral Milk, Milk Hotel with uh, In the Aeroplane Over the Sea, a record that you know, didn't have, you know, huge expectations, wasn't even necessarily super well reviewed upon first release. And then over the years has just built this following of people that just think it is one of the greatest albums of all time. And along with that, you know, Neutral Milk Hotel's status has risen as well. Uh, I like the record. I think it's a very good record. I enjoy it a lot. It's not one of my all time favorites, but I can get I can get the uh, love of it. Then I'm going to go with I don't know. These might be controversial, these picks, because I feel like they might not really be cult uh, artists anymore. I feel like 20 years ago they would have been, but maybe the star, their stars have risen too much. 
through documentaries and reissues and just more people discovering them. Uh, but I'm going to go with Big Star. I think Big Star is a very much a cult band. I think without specific famous uh, people championing, championing, championing them uh, throughout the 80s, like uh, the replacements writing the song Alex Chilton and always talking about Alex Chilton and having Alex Chilton play on the records and uh, people like R.E.M. and Mike Mills and just different you know, high profile people talking about them. Uh, they wouldn't have gotten to the point where most people, maybe not most people, but most fans of music now know who Big Star are, and they are seen as basically, you know, huge figures in 70s rock, whereas at one point they were virtually unknown. And then the same case for this next artist, um, Nick Drake, who I think, you know, had very little success during his lifetime. And really, it wasn't until a Volkswagen commercial, I don't, I don't know exactly when that was, right around 2000, maybe, uh, late 90s, something like that. Uh, he had the song Pink Moon in a commercial, and that basically just catapulted his career from there. And it seems like more and more people slowly discover him. He becomes uh, more and more well-known, very highly regarded now at this point. Um, for those in the know, maybe always was, but uh, just seems to be coming ever more well known and rightfully so i think his music is fantastic yeah i mean it's tough to talk about cult artists when you talk about music all the time on the internet because undoubtedly most of the people that we talk to are going to know those artists but then you talk to the general public and they would look at you like you have two heads or something if you started talking about some of these bands um so it is, so you got to figure out like, well, where's the cult uh, begin and end? I am going to go um, kind of the same direction. Uh, I will start off with a pretty obvious one. We were just talking about Gene Clark. So let's do Graham Parsons, who stars, definitely risen um, lately. It's another one where I feel like he was basically completely forgotten about for decades until, you know, alt country and, and sort of this like more obsession with Americana more recently, people kind of rediscovered him, uh, his work with the birds and the flying burrito brothers. And then his two solo albums, maybe it was when John Cusack name dropped grievous angel, um, in high fidelity, people maybe started paying attention again to, Graham, another one sort of from that same world, that same genre, Willis Allen Ramsey, who I don't know if people know, they probably know Muskrat Love, which was later covered by America and uh, Captain Tennille, but he wrote it. It was on his album, uh, self-titled Willis Allen Ramsey, which he did with a bunch of uh, some of the players that were playing with Gene and Graham around the same time, uh, Russ Kunkel, Jim Keltner, uh, Leon Russell's on this album, uh, Leland Sklar plays bass. So you have all these like big name country rock uh, players on this. And it was somewhat successful, I guess. I don't know how successful it was, but he had a big cult and he just never released another album. He says he's been working on it since uh, 1997. And this album came out in 1972. So I guess he's in no hurry to really, he's living off those muskrat love uh, royalties, I guess. But uh, really cool, interesting country rock album. I just didn't want to do any more. Cool. Uh, another artist, well, one of them walked away, but Jellyfish. Um, I feel like when you're talking about cult artists, like it's folk, power pop, or like country rock because none of those genres quite get enough respect i think like all these great power pop bands like big star never quite broke into the mainstream i think they all kind of disappointed their labels to the point where i just like well it's not going to happen for them jellyfish was another one put out two great power pop albums in the early 90s big cult following still and uh they just kind of disappeared and that was it i mean i don't know I, both of them made my top five albums of the year they won 
album of the year in 90 and 93 for me and we will never get another jellyfish album and that's it's very sad to me another dude i've been talking about a couple of times i mentioned him in our obscure 70 songs andy pratt uh, he had one hit in the early 70s with a song called avenging annie uh scrape the bottom of the billboard charts and it itself is this really weird like feminist take on the annie oakley legend and the rest of the songs on the album are really strange. Like he was a weird dude. They hooked him up with a disco producer, I think the uh, Bee Gees producer. And he made this really cool disco influenced uh, power pop rock album. Uh, sounds a lot like the Scissor Sisters actually. And I think Rolling Stone said he was gonna change the face of pop music. Clearly he did not because no one really ever heard of him again. But apparently this album got some huge reviews in the 70s. But uh, I don't know, he, he was, it seems like he was just like one of those really weird dudes who they wrangled into making a kind of mainstream album one time. And then he sort of didn't want to do it anymore and just did his own thing. But he's got some cool stuff. Definitely check him out. Um, last one, I was going to do Slint, but I hate them. So I will do Judy Sill who I, I feel like she's getting a lot more mentions lately. Um, she was a you know, folky, but with some big lush production. Uh, she was very influenced by Bach, which is cool. And I think her music sounds very modern despite its origins in the 1970s. Um, and she got some really cool folk pop. She only did two albums. She OD'd on heroin and cocaine or whatever late 70s so some of these artists walk away some of them you know die from drugs uh like graham parsons and well he was the only one other one that i mentioned anyway but if you die early you're probably more likely to have a cult following at some point or walk away that seems to be what it is for my bands anyway all right, so let us know uh, what some of your favorite cult acts are let us know there's plenty that we missed or didn't mention, uh, drop them down in the comments. Hit the like button. Uh, be sure if you haven't seen the other two videos from this week, uh, the ranking the albums and the songs, uh, top 10 songs, make sure you go check those out as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. You can also find Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, website, merch, and our Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel further. Check all those links out in the video description. And we'll see you in the next one.